What is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Poco A5 5G and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest superior extended ROM and I have been daily driving this for a week almost and this is the full review of this 10th March 2024 build of the superior extended ROM on the Poco A5. If you don't know how to flash this ROM, check out the flashing guide from the description. And this particular ROM comes with two separate versions. One is GApps and one is Vanilla. Of course, the Vanilla one does not include GApps. As usual, I have flashed the GApps included variant here. In the settings panel, if you want to go into the About section, you have to tap here. And then if you just scroll down and then go into the Android version section, this is how it looks like. We have the superior extended version right here. It shows 14 and the Android version is of course Android 14. If you keep tapping and holding on it, it will give you the Android 14's easter egg and it's giving me a haptic feedback. So yeah, that's nice. Let me go back. In here we have the device maintainer as KSS route. So huge thanks to the developer of this ROM. Then we have the security patch as February 5th, 2024. It is coming with the February patch, not March patch. So that's how it is. And if you go all the way to the bottom, you will find the system settings in here. This is how it looks like everywhere. It has this kind of looking animation. Looks cool overall in the UI. And here we have the updater. You can check for updates from right here. We have the other options as well. In here we have some sensor off and we have this Wi-Fi randomization kind of thing. That's pretty much it about the system settings. The gestures and stuff are there in the customization settings. I'll show you that later on. But first, let me talk about the most interesting part about this particular run that I found out. That is the quick setting panel. Well, it looks like the OnePlus kind of quick setting panel and it looks very different from other custom ROMs. I am just loving this kind of different look on this particular ROM. Everywhere, it's just a very smooth experience. No problems. You can edit and add multiple different toggles. But surprisingly, it does not offer a always on display toggle. I don't know why. What's the issue with that? There is no always on display toggle over here, even though we get a beautiful looking quick setting panel. That's how it is, but here on the top, you will get the internet kind of toggle. So if you just tap here, you can go straight up and access your mobile data, your hotspot, and even your Wi-Fi settings from right here. And we have the Bluetooth tab right here, and this actually toggles on or off the Bluetooth. Now, let's talk about the issues that I have faced in this particular ROM. That sometimes I have seen when I'm connected to a Bluetooth device, this Bluetooth battery, as you can see right now, it has appeared, but most of the time I have seen it's not appearing on the status bar which is a little weird for me. One more thing that I have faced over here everywhere in the UI while doing normal stuff, it just force closes the UI once in a day, I would say. Yes, the screen goes black for about two to three seconds, then I unlock and it's totally fine. And I have faced this issue almost like within 10 to 12 hours once. So that's how it is. I would say it's not a huge issue, but yeah, I have faced these kind of issues in this particular ROM while daily driving. By the way, these are the stock apps of this ROM. You do get a BCR over here. That's the call recording. But otherwise, you do get the open source kind of dialer. And that also supports the call recording. And we also have the contacts and the USB messaging app and stuff, all those things. But I have been using the Google's messaging app and the Google's dialer. There is a USB gallery app as well. You can use it. There is also the game space and stuff. If you want to add any game and gaming overlay, there is Dolby Atmos as well in this ROM. But the fresh walls and stuff are there because I was restoring my Google app data backup. And you can customize the Dolby Atmos as well from right here, however you want to. So yeah, it has really good amount of features. You can also go custom over here and you can customize it, the equalizer and stuff manually. And while you are playing music, this is how it looks like over here in the media player kind of section in the quick setting panel. And you can play or pause music from right here. You can put it on the next track. And if you just tap here, as you can see, you can change the output device from right here of the sound. So that's really nice that we get this media kind of thing on the top right of the screen. And the animations of this, if you just tap here, it just opens the music player, as you can see. So yeah, it looks beautiful, I would say. Sometimes I have seen the Valdi straight up goes for a ride over here. Otherwise, it's mostly working. But like once or twice, I have faced that the Valdi was not simply working. I got some messages of the missed calls, which you get in Geo if you missed some call. So yeah, Vaulty sometimes goes for a ride. You have to bear with it in this particular ROM, I guess, because I did not face this kind of issue in other ROMs in my area. Brightness slider is right here in the middle. You can actually change the position to the bottom as well if you don't like it that way. But yeah, I like this kind of layout over here. And the power menu appears like this and you can go and directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here. And this kind of look in the power menu looks beautiful in my opinion. And this background blur kind of effect you are seeing because I have customized the quick setting panel background opacity from the customization settings. 
Now let's talk about the stock launcher. Well, in the home screen settings, this is how it looks like. We have the superior launcher as default launcher. In the miscellaneous settings, we have these kind of customization. We can dissolve the station and we have the hidden and protected apps and stuff like that. Let me go back in the recents. We have the background opacity, memory info, screenshot, lens, clear all, all these things. Shake phone to clear all task option is there. In the app drawer, we have the themed icons, app search bar and the other toggles. And we have the home screen layout right here where you can lock the layout. We have add app icons to the home screen, double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen. Then we have the wallpaper scrolling and zooming. If you just scroll down more, we have a bunch more settings right here. Let me go back. We have the icons customization right here. We have the notification dots and stuff. To the left of the home screen, we have the Google's discover page. Swiping up will get you to the app drawer and swiping down will get you to the quick setting panel, of course. The widgets are working totally fine. I have added the battery widget and the Bluetooth kind of battery does not show up for some reason right now. And we have the normal subscriber account widget that is also working fine. So widgets are not a problem in this particular ROM. And if you just tap and hold on a particular ROM, there is a really cool option that you can actually open this as you can see. So yeah, it opens your Twitter in a free form kind of window. And this is how it looks like. So this is really nice that you can straight up launch a particular app in a free form window and you can scale it from right here or you can just go back, I guess. So yeah, you can do all of those things right here if you just tap and hold on a particular app. Let's talk about the stock camera. Well, we have the Leica camera version 5 right out of the box in this ROM and in the settings of it, it has huge amount of customization. We have the picture quality as super and stuff. And if you just scroll down more, we have the buttons, you can change it to shutter. Then we have much more settings from right here. And if you just swipe up on the home screen of the camera, you will get the other options like the vlog, short film, slow motion, time lapse, etc. kind of options. And swiping down, you will get the Leica camera version 5 kind of options. All the lenses are working totally fine, no problems with it. And if you just switch to the front camera, yes, that too is working perfectly fine, no problems with the front camera. The portrait mode is also working fine. You get the basic features, of course, the Leica camera is working perfectly fine. And we have the 4K 60fps with the rear camera shooting option. So that is nice. As you can see, 4K 60fps right now is showing up right here. So you can shoot 4K 60fps videos with the rear camera. And with the front camera, you can go up to 1080p and 60fps, I guess, as you can see from here. There is the documents mode. You can also shoot pro mode videos in this camera. So with all of the features, I would say this camera is really great. I'll give you some samples in the screen in case you want to get an idea about the camera quality. Talking about the basic features, of course, the DRM4 shows as L1 over here. So you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p. In terms of the play integrity check, it actually shows meets device integrity and basic integrity both. So the banking apps did not give me any issues. I have been using banking apps, no problem so far with those. The Play Store here shows as device is certified. So that's nice. The IR Blaster here also works perfectly fine. And you do get the Google Pixels unlimited photos and videos backup over here. No need to worry about that. By the way, in the recent panel, this is how it looks like. We have the screenshot, the lens and the clear all feature. Then we have the RAM usage on the bottom and you can go into the split screen mode or lock or freeform mode from right here. I'll show you the customization in the later part of the video. But first, let me go into the display settings. We have the brightness level, auto brightness and the extra dim feature. In the lock screen, we have the use device controls. When the shortcuts are there, the lock screen shortcuts you can customize from right here. These many options are there. Always on display is there, but you have to enable it with this particular toggle that is the always show time and info. There is no quick setting toggle to actually enable or disable the always on display. We have the always on display scheduling option as well. We have the lift to check phone as well, but it only goes into the lock screen. Let me actually show you. I have the lift to check phone right now turned on and the always on display turned off. So if I put the device on the desk and pick it up on my hand, as you can see, it straight up goes into the lock screen. So this is how the lift to check phone actually works. But yeah, it does work. And we have the wake screen for notification. Then we have the dark theme and there is the pure black or the use black theme option. We have the display size and text in here. We have the font size, display size, etc. customization. The colors, you can change it to boosted, saturated, adaptive. And there is the RGB control of the screen. All those things are working. We have the auto red screen. The refresh rate option is there. There is an adaptive refresh rate right here. So you can use it if you want to. So I think it will save some kind of power. But with that, I have seen sometimes it goes slightly. I have seen some glitches here and there with this adaptive display turned on. But you can also turn it off and just use always 120 hertz. Or you can use 90 hertz as well if you want to use that. You can also use 90 hertz all the time so that it can save a little bit of battery, I guess. There is display cutout option. I don't know why you would you use that, but yeah, the option is there. We have the full screen apps, then the screen saver, then we have the allow window level blurs, double tap to wake, and we have the prevent external wake up or the pocket detection. 
In the wallpapers and styles, this is how it looks like. You can change the wallpapers from right here. There is the Supix kind of wallpaper. That is the superior extended wallpaper. Let me go back. We have different clocks of Android 14 as you can see, but I think there is one clock missing. I have seen a new clock in Android 14, but that is simply not present in here. Except for one clock, there is all the Android 14 clocks. No need to worry about them. We have the shortcuts and we have the more locks and stuff right here. In the home screen settings, we have the app grid and you can change it up to six by 10. That's a huge amount of option. We have the theme icons right here. And in the icon packs, you have plethora of option. Then we have the font styles. And again, plethora of options are there for the font style. There is a nothing dot headline font and stuff. All those things are still present. No need to worry about them. We have the shapes as well, the icon shapes you can also change. In the battery settings, this is I think one of the most interesting feature of this particular ROM that right here it shows this kind of animation and also we get to see the battery capacity, the current or design battery capacity. Then we have the charging cycles as well. My device has 339 charging cycles. We have the temperature right here, the battery temperature. It shows right now as 36 degrees and we have the battery usage. The sleep mode is also there and there are plethora of options. We have the battery optimization per app you can do from right here. And we also have the charging control as well. If you enable that, your fast charging will slow down. So be careful about that. We have a battery stats right here and we have the thermal profiles as well. So you can set particular apps to benchmark if you want to, or you can have different kind of profiles for particular apps. In the Aku battery app, I have tested the battery life with it. And the screen on time, the estimated screen on time in here shows as eight hours and 12 minutes. I would say that's a decent amount of screen on time that I have been getting. Not too bad. I would say and we have the screen off as 35 hours that's obviously more than one day of standby and we have the combined use as about 12 hours it shows or 11 hours so yeah these are all estimated numbers but still I would say the battery life is decent on this particular ROM and also the fast charging over here is working perfectly fine no need to worry about it much in the notifications of course if you just scroll down a little bit more we have the flash screen notification all these android 14 kind of features are there but in the app settings i don't see the dual apps kind of feature over here it doesn't show up but it does have the game space kind of app in here in the app drawer and you can add any game that you would want to have the gaming overlay on in the sound and vibration settings this is how it looks like by the way the volume panel for me looks like this you can expand it and you can change the output device from right here and you can also like just put the volume on mute or stuff like that from right here and it gives you a haptic feedback while you are increasing or decreasing the volume you can change the sound profile from right here then we have the alarm volume the ring and the media volume and stuff all this customization in the sound settings of course we have the spatial audio we have the vibration and haptic feedback if we just scroll down more we can change the haptic feedback but this is the lowest touch feedback i can go if i go any lower it will just disable itself let me go back we have the ringtone vibration pattern changing option then we have the dial pad tone, screen locking sound, charging sound and vibration kind of stuff. We just scroll down a little bit more. We have the always show icon when vibrate mode and we have the power app volume control and the volume panel on the left side. Then we also have the volume steps as well. Then we have the Dirac sound and this is how it looks like. The Mio Duo Dirac also is working fine. There are the headphone presets, no need to worry about them. And the sound quality via Bluetooth headphones and even the normal plugged in earphones are working perfectly fine. We have the choose preset option. You can have the bass reduction, bass booster, etc. options. Enable Hi-Fi option is there as well and you can even change the scene options. Let me go back. We have a clear speaker option as well. You can use it if you want to. In the security settings, this is how it looks like. If you go into the more settings, there is the app lock. I have obviously enabled the app lock with particular apps. I'll show you that in the device unlock in the settings of it. We have the quick unlock as well. Then we have the fingerprint and the face unlock both. First, let me show you with the fingerprint sensor and here the always on display looks like this. If I just double tap, just notice animation looks beautiful. No need to worry about it. And here tapping on the fingerprint scanner. It's very fast experience. No problems whatsoever. It unlocks way fast. As you can see, no issues that I have faced with the fingerprint sensor. It's a very fast experience. Let me try the other finger. That too is working fine. And just notice the animations. It's very smooth. No issues so far that I have faced. Also the app lock. This is how it looks like. If I just tap the fingerprint scanner, as you can see, it straight up opens. There is a watch unlock kind of feature over here. So if you have a smartwatch, you can actually set it up, I guess. Now let me just set up the face unlock quickly. Just completed the setup of the face unlock. And in here, we only have the skip lock screen. So I think it will unlock straight away with the face unlock. Let me try. So I'll just double tap. And whenever I point the device towards my face, it unlocks straight up. I don't have to swipe up or anything. So that's how it is. I would say, yeah. Just look at this. It's just straight up unlocking. So yeah, that's how it is. You can also unlock it. If you have, I think the lift to check phone turned on, it will unlock right away whenever you point the device towards your face. Yes, it's the fastest way I would say. 
but yeah it's also not that safe in my opinion let me know down there in the comments if you guys actually use face unlock on a daily basis so that's pretty much all the setting stuff let's talk performance well overall with 120 hertz everything is working fine no need to worry and here if i just open multiple different apps like twitter and here okay so i just clicked on grok now here let's open some different apps let's open youtube as well so yeah all these things are working perfectly fine as you can see chrome well it is in memory i just scrolled down but otherwise as you can see the ram management here it's really good no problems but let me tell you that i have actually switched from the project elixir rom and from that to this one yes i can see a little bit of glitches here and there in the project elixir rom it's just much more stable and much more smooth experience in my opinion otherwise i would say here also you will get a smooth experience but with all this customization and all it can get a little bit choppy here and there sometimes so that is how I feel. I would say if the Project Elixir is giving me 100% performance, here I'm getting about 98% performance. So that is how I feel about this particular ROM. And if you want to get an idea with the benchmarks, here are the several benchmarks that I have tested on this particular ROM. You can check out from the screen and the 3D mark scores. And right now, let me talk about the customizations. Well, the customizations are present in the Superior Lab and this ROM's name is Superior Extended. Even more customization than the Superior OS ROMs. We have the About Time section, so you can see all the developer's name and stuff. We have the Theme section right here and in here we have the Monet Theme settings. We have these theme styles as well. Accent color, background color, all these things are there. Then we have the UI style and plethora of options are there for the UI style. And we have the font style and stuff and just notice the amount of fonts huge huge amount of fonts are there we have the lock screen clock fonts as well these are the android 13 kind of lock screen clock fonts you can use them also if you want to so yeah 100 plus options are there i think even the icon packs just notice the amount of option then we have the signal icon styles as well and again notice the amount of options the data icon styles as well are there then we have the wi-fi icon styles as well also we have the volume panel style you can also change that between these many options then we have the switch style just notice these amount of options are there and we have the brightness slider styles as well i have been using it with the inline and with that this is how it looks like you can customize that too we have the icon shapes as well then we have the nav bar styles you can change that too in the status bar we have the status bar items right here you can enable the headset bluetooth headset icons for some reason it doesn't show the vaulty icon but yeah it does have this hd calling icon instead of vaulty i guess i would have loved to see a vaulty logo instead but yeah that's how it is we have the battery bar right here you can enable and customize it in the battery styles of course you get plethora of battery styles including with the ios 16 style and stuff and we have the window style as well then we have even more colorways and stuff all those things big dotted circle and stuff like that you get everything we have the next to the icon battery percentage you can also change the battery icon for the quick setting panel stuff and we have the miscellaneous battery icon customization i would say and in here we have the status bar lyric right here we have the show data disabled icon 4g icon show wi-fi icon type and the network traffic indicator we have the colored icons as well the logo we have my camera privacy then the media projection icon and we have the clock style you can actually change the clock font size and stuff you can enable the background chip if you want to just like this but yeah, i'll just disable that for the time being we have the status bar padding over here that's really nice that you can customize it because with the tempered glass and stuff you need to sometimes customize the top padding or left or right padding so that's how it is you can customize the status bar padding over here that's really nice in the quick settings we have the show data usage quick setting quick pull down then the quick setting dual tone clock font size Quick setting transparency option is there. We also have the custom header image as well. You can enable that. We have the brightness slider. You can change the position to show always and to the bottom if you want to. But yeah, I didn't change it here because it looks good with this kind of layout. And we have the auto brightness icon, haptic feedback, brightness percentage and stuff. And we have the quick setting tiles layout also. You can customize that to Android 11 style or you can change the shapes from right here. If you just hold down mode, you can adjust the column and stuff. We have the animation styles as well. In the buttons, we have the volume percentage. Then we have the percentage location. You can also change right here in the volume panel. As you can see, we have the media output stuff and we have the playback control, arrow keys, reorient, etc. In the navigation bar, this is how it looks like. In the settings of it, we have the gesture navigation. In the settings of it, we have the pill length and the pill radius custom customization back gesture height and we have the back gesture animation ime button space and we have the swipe to invoke assistant as well you do get the gemini right here so you can use it but tapping and holding on this area doesn't do anything here we have this left edge right edge customization haptic feedback and the enable gesture bar you can also do that from right here you can disable it if you want to here we have the three button navigations so if i tap and hold so yes, it just brings the google assistant that's how it is 
it doesn't search the screen. We have the compact layout, the pixel animation, all these things. In the gestures, we have the system gesture settings. We have the quickly open camera and stuff. And we have the one handed mode as well. That too should be working fine. Yes. And we have the lift to check phone. You can disable it. We have the lift to check phone here as well, but it goes into the lock screen. We have the quick torch and you can use it. It does work. We have the swipe quick screenshot. That too is working fine. We have the share, edit, delete and the Google Lens feature. Then we have the prevent ringing. The double tap on fingerprint sensor option is there. So you can customize it with various kind of actions. Let me go back. We have the double tap to sleep, double tap to check phone and the advanced gestures option is there. So extended swipe actions you can actually customize from right here. In the lock screen, we have this kind of look over here. So there are some custom clocks. You can use those if you want to clock oxygen waste. So yeah, it shows never settle right here. So if I use that, as you can see, this is how it looks like. Or you can even go, there is a clock fluid. There is a fluid clock as well. This is how it will look like. So yeah, you get the idea. There are plethora of custom clocks over here. You can use this if you want to. But I'll go with the default one that I have been using, which is the Android 14 kind of clock. And in here we have the dynamic clock. Then we have the lock screen charging info. Screen of animation, height status bar option is there in the lock screen. Wake up on charge. Then the pocket detection option is there. We have the display media cover art, pulse and the music ticker. Then we have the fingerprint authentication and error vibration, ripple effect. And we also have the weather settings right here in case you want to use that. In the power menu, we have the normal power menu settings. Advanced reboot, you can enable it from here. We got the power menu opacity kind of customizations here also. Then in the notifications, we have the annoying notification. Island notification is there. There is the heads up option. You can customize that. We have the make heads up less annoying option. Four stop button and we have the clear all button as well. We have the edge lighting, you can enable it if you want to. We just scroll down more, we have the in-call vibration options. You can use all of these. Let me go back, we have the miscellaneous settings right here. We get the ambient AOD customization, so you can customize the color and stuff. We have the media show time, then the smart pixels options are there. We have the unlock higher piece and games, unlimited Google photo storage. Then we have the use storage encryption. Then we have the setting style and stuff, header style, etc. you can customize. Random settings, header image option is there. We have the ignore window secure flags. Charging background option is there. So if you enable that, the background while charging will turn dark. We have the show clipboard overlay. Kill background progress option is there. So with all those customizations, it has the Leica camera. It has the oxygenous kind of or USB kind of dialer and stuff. If you want those, you can definitely use it. But sometimes I have seen the video call was not working, but otherwise the normal calling and stuff is working. But sometimes that I have faced that faulty kind of going away. So that is how it is with overall, I would say the experience of this particular ROM is decent. But if you want to have the most stable experience, in my opinion, you should stick with the project release ROM on the Poco A5. Otherwise, if you want to try the most amount of customization, you can definitely try this ROM if you want to. So let me know in the comments what you guys think. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Please share this video if you want your friends to know about the superior extended ROM on the Poco A5 and how it's running. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not yet this. It's Tito from KDNTX signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.